I quit my corporate job over three years ago and have been doing content creation, retreats, events, podcasting, coaching, like everything under the sun I think I've tried. I've learned a lot over the years and I think that if I started implementing these things sooner, I would have gotten to where I've been trying to go a lot quicker. Things I wish I knew sooner when going from a corporate job to a full-time content creator and entrepreneur that no one else is going to tell you, so I will. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rebecca, your self-development sis. And on my channel, you can find digestible bite-sized pieces of self-development content I'm posting every single Sunday so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos to help you go from surviving to thriving. So I love talking about this topic and I genuinely don't think that it's talked about enough which is the personal development that comes from owning your own business. <laughs> the personal development that you'll need to work on if you are an aspiring content creator or if you are a content creator, an entrepreneur, a coach or an aspiring coach, all of these things require some level of self-development that happens within you so that you can show up as your best self and have the most successful thriving business. Because as an entrepreneur, content creator, coach, you are your business to an extent, right? And if you are an aspiring coach, content creator, or business owner, or you are already a content creator and entrepreneur, I am launching something very soon, exciting, that's for women entrepreneurs, content creators, and coaches. So add your email to the waitlist in the show notes in the description of this video because I am so excited about it and I want you to be able to join the community. So add your email ASAP before it closes. Anyways, let's get into this video. So here are some things about the internal work, the mindset, the self-development work that is so important that I wish I did sooner as an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for four years now. I quit my corporate job over three years ago and have been doing content creation, retreats, events, podcasting, coaching, like everything under the sun. I think I've tried literally everything within the wellness and self-development space. So I've learned a lot over the years. And I think that if I started implementing these things sooner, I would have gotten to where I've been trying to go a lot quicker. And I still implement these things, by the way. So this is definitely super important work that we need to be doing. Number one, I wish that I worked through any fears that I had sooner. I really wish that I worked through like my fear of being seen, fear of what people are going to think about me, all the different fears that come with showing up in a new way, showing up online, posting, trying something new. Like there's so many fears that come with it that every single person goes through, myself included. And the more you address these fears and you break down these fears and these walls, the easier of a time you're going to have. And I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying that we need to bring awareness to this topic because it's all fine and dandy to be doing the, the actions, right? It's great to be doing the postings, to be doing like doing, doing, doing constantly, but you're only going to get so far if you're still being stopped by these subconscious and unconscious fears that are blocking you. So there are many different ways to work through this. First of all, it just starts with awareness. Second off, I think doing a many different journaling, meditation practices that I've personally done and have worked, working with a coach, talking it out with somebody, like truly taking time to be introspective and work through these things so you can rewire your subconscious mind is so, so powerful. And if you want even more on this, I have a ton coming, so make sure that you add your email to the waitlist in the description. Number two, I wish that I worked on my own inner confidence and conviction way more than I did in the beginning because I doubted myself so, so much. And a lot of it stemmed from this deep lack of confidence and conviction with what I was doing because it was new, right? So for example, when I first started health coaching and taking on one-on-one -on -one clients, I really had a hard time with charging the amount that you know I needed to survive and make a living. I really felt guilty or I just felt a lot of shame around how much money to charge people. And that really stemmed from this deeper insecurity and lack of confidence with my own value and what I was doing and the conviction that I had. 
over time, it got easier as I saw clients creating results and having these massive transformations. But it was really hard for me because I was like, I don't know if I truly believe it deep down within myself that I'm capable or that I'm worthy. And these are all subconscious things. And so if you're listening to this right now, I want you to know that you have to be so confident in what you're selling, even if you don't fully 100% believe it, you have to be confident when you're posting. You have to have that confidence because if you don't, other people aren't going to feel that from you. And you're going to have a much harder time selling and doing the things you're trying to do if you aren't even confident because people need to feel that conviction. The person who wins in any room or in any situation is the person who has the most conviction. And even if you have to fake it and you have a hard time with it, do what you need to do to fake it, fake that conviction and confidence. And I find as women, we have a harder time with this. I don't think men struggle with this as much because we just doubt ourselves and we don't have this inner conviction and the more action and the things you do, it gets easier over time. But I really wish that I started working on this sooner because then I would have felt more confident charging more money or more confident offering more things or programs that deep down I know I could do, but I let these, these fears and these, this lack of confidence stop me from doing it. Number three, I wish I stopped caring what other people thought a lot sooner. And I'll never forget when I first started posting on social media, Whenever somebody that I knew followed my account or saw what I was posting, I remember I would call my best friend, Jesse. I'm like, Jesse, is this weird? Should I not do this? Should I delete everything? And she was like, no, relax, stay calm. This is great. Like, don't worry about it. She, called, she helped me out so much because I really, really struggled with the fear of what other people were going to think about me. Because over time, I realized that if I continued to let the fear of what other people thought about me, or if I continued to care what other people thought about me, that means that I wasn't going to show up authentically. And you are only going to show up 100% authentically yourself when you genuinely have no care anymore of what other people think about you. That is when you start to show up completely authentically yourself. And I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying the more that you start to consciously think about this and ask yourself, do I want to continue my life for other people? Do I want to continue living my life with the fear of what people are going to think and let that stop me and hold me back? Because at the end of the day, time is still going to pass by. Next year is still going to happen. You're going to still be in the same place a year from now if you don't start to change this. So really just sit with it for a second. I don't think anybody on their deathbed looks back. Sorry, it's morbid, but they don't look back and say, wow, I'm really glad that I didn't do the things I wanted to do so that nobody thought it was weird or nobody thought that, you know, could judge me or care what I was doing. Think about it for a sec. Number four, I wish I tried more new things that were outside of my comfort zone earlier. And this is something that I will say I feel like I'm pretty good at. I'm always constantly seeking growth and challenging myself and getting outside my comfort zone. But I wish I did even more to the extent of posting about different things, trying new different programs, like talking to different people, like learning more. Anything that was new and outside my comfort zone, I always learned the most after doing it. I always grew the most, even if it was quote unquote unsuccessful. So I want you to really remind yourself that it's not necessarily about what is successful or not. It's not necessarily about what does well or not. It's actually about what you do that gets you outside your comfort zone that matters because then you're going to grow and you're going to learn from these experiences more than anything else. Like I remember I've launched things before, launched eBooks, launched certain things that I thought were going to do so well. And I had a, such high expectations and it fell short, but that doesn't mean it was a failure. It was actually a win because then it brought me closer to my next thing and my next thing and my next thing that then helped uncover what it is I really should be doing. And lastly, tip number five, something I wish I did sooner because this is super important as an entrepreneur was I wish that I focused more on my environment and I wish I focused more on creating an environment for myself that would have set me up for the highest amount of success that would have really inspired me, that would have piqued my creativity that would made me just feel like so excited and happy because 
I think I didn't want to admit how much my environment was impacting me after a certain point. And our environments have such a direct impact on everything we're doing in our lives, especially if you're somebody who's working from home, if you're trying to do your own thing, if you're trying to be creative. Our environments will dictate so much. And so you have to ask yourself, what is my living situation like? What is the environment of the people I'm surrounding myself with? Where am I going to work every day? Like what environment am I putting myself in to best set me up for success? Because now I'm at a place where I'm making sure that my next apartment where I'm living has the energy and the feelings that I need that I know will set me up for success because I have seen firsthand how directly correlated our environments are as to our success and productivity levels. So make sure you're doing a wide scan of all the different environments in your life, your home, your friends, the places you're going, what you're doing, the places you live in, even if you need to move cities, ask yourself, what environments am I putting myself in? And are they benefiting my ultimate, ultimate highest good? So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed today's Sunday self-development video and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future ones going forward. Peace.